Did you know that there's a lot of men out there that work really hard to quit? That may sound confusing. That may sound like that's not true, but it is actually a reality. Many men who are battling confusion and insecurity, the things we talked about in the past two weeks, work really hard to get away from their problems. You are going to be able to learn all about that and to see if there's any of that in your life today on the show. This is the Thriving Man Podcast with David and Reese Maxwell. These weekly shows are designed to help you remove the confusion from your life and make real progress with your growth. No matter where you are or where you're going, we're here to help you live a life you can be proud of. So welcome to the Thriving Man Podcast. Welcome to the Thriving Man Podcast, where we help you live a life that you can be proud of. I'm Reese. And I'm David. And we are here to talk about the third of the three major barriers that are between you and true success. Uh, First week, we talked about uh, confusion. Mm -hmm. Second week, we talked about just the general frustration. Yeah. And now we're talking about this, I guess you could call it escapism. Yeah. You could call it that because there's a lot of different methods we use to escape, but it hurts us. It's that idea of escapism is actively giving up. Mm -hmm. Escapism is. is trying to get away from the uncomfortable things in our life. Yeah, for men, it's really a, it's how they avoid things. Mm-hmm. Men are really good at, I need to do this, but I would rather do this. And sometimes we do that, especially when we get into areas that are very uncomfortable for us. Mm-hmm. We're really good at finding other things to do, kind of moving to the other side. Because men don't like feeling like, you know, maybe I'm not going to do this well, so I would just mm-hmm. rather not do it. Yeah, Maybe I'll mess up. And we don't like to look bad. And so a lot of times what we do is we find those things maybe we're good at or we enjoy, and we kind of hone in on those and don't do the other stuff that maybe we need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's something we've never done before or you know yeah. whatever, but it's things that we just kind of, okay, so I'm going to actively avoid this. I'm going to stay active, so mm-hmm. I feel like I'm doing something, mm-hmm. but I'm really just avoiding. Yeah, and it's natural. I think yeah. because no one likes feeling incompetent. Yeah. No one likes yeah. feeling uncomfortable. No one likes feeling like they're failing. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you do, there's something a little wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But we can't run away from that feeling because once we begin to do that, it becomes a barrier between yeah. us and actually living the best life for ourselves. I think of, at least for me, like the house repair. That you know needs to happen. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know for a fact. Yeah. Like, uh, for us, like, our fence in the backyard, mm-hmm. it, it needs some work. And I know it's going to be expensive. I know it's going to be a pain in the butt, <laughs> to be frank. And so when it gets brought up, I'm like, well, let's make a list of the things we need to do and then pick, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I sometimes I just don't want to do any of it. Yeah. I want to avoid it all. So. Well, for me, what I do is I, I have things that I need to do, and there's things that I enjoy and things that I need to do that I don't necessarily enjoy. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, it's amazing how those things kind of move down the list of what to do. Oh, yeah. Or you pick the thing that isn't really that important, mm-hmm. but you like it better. You like it, so yeah. you just for sure put that to the top, which yeah. you're supposed to rate the things and do all this. But a lot of times, we're just doing what's comfortable yeah, and we, we're just avoiding the other. Yeah, and to help the listeners today, we need to kind of dive into how guys escape. Yeah. Because there's a few different tactics, and a different personality will mm-hmm. go a lot of times to a different thing to deal with it. Yeah. So yeah. let's talk about the first one. What's the first major tactic we use to avoid? Yeah, what a lot of guys do to avoid, because it doesn't feel like avoiding when they're doing it, is they go with busyness. Mm-hmm. You know, to a man, a lot of men, when I'm busy, I'm successful. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of have created a society where busyness means I'm worthy. You know, people respect me, all this. We even saw it. I saw it doing a youth ministry for years with kids where parents, in their mind, a successful teenager is one who's busy. Right. They say, well, if they're busy, they're out of trouble. Yeah, And so they're kind of avoiding a lot of the parenting things they need to be doing because they're just busy, but they feel like they're doing something. That's what men do. We create a lot of busyness, so we feel good. But a lot of times that busyness is us avoiding 
maybe some of the stuff we need to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have time to spend with my child. They say I'm busy. Oh, I'm earning money for my child, their college education and stuff. But mm -hmm. what it really is, is they're uncomfortable building an emotional relationship with their 13 year old daughter. So yeah. they just avoid it. Yeah. No, I mean, that's exactly right. So I don't know if it's the same in other Western nations. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be interested. I know we've got some listeners in like New Zealand and yeah. places like that. We'd love to hear your comments on this. But in the US, we applaud busyness. Yeah. We almost worship busyness. Mm -hmm. I mean, our culture says, if you are busy, you are successful. Yeah. The problem with that is, like you said, men can go to busyness to get away from things that they don't want to deal with and still feel successful. Yeah. I'm you still, still feel getting good. stuff mm -hmm. done. Like I'm, I'm doing my checklist. Yeah. It's just the wrong checklist. Yeah. And you hear guys sometimes talk about how little sleep they need, mm -hmm. you know, and it's almost this bragging, you know, oh, I don't have time for anything. And it's almost a flex. Mm -hmm. It's kind of that that way of flexing, like at the gym or something. You know, I'm so it's, it's, needed. Yeah, I'm so needed, man. My man, I had to go into work extra and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's fine. But when your worth is caught up in your busyness, you eventually just run yourself ragged, mm -hmm. um, where you can't do anything and you avoid yeah. a lot. And that's when sometimes life slaps you upside the face. Mm -hmm. So we, we do go to busyness. I think that's one that people will miss. So I'm glad we really sat and yeah. focused on that one. Some of the next ones we're going to talk about, I think people would more expect. Yeah. One way that we escape is virtually. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely say this is a tempting one for me. Oh, yeah. I love it all, man. I love video games. Yeah. I love shows. I love, you know, funny TikToks. Mm -hmm. All of that stuff is super entertaining to me. Yeah. And, and like when you play a video game, you get a certain sense of reward. Mm -hmm. And so, you know... You just get to you get to escape. Yeah, you get to kind of step away. It's like, yes, I know this needs to get fixed, but that's going to get me dirty, sweaty, tired, exhausted. Yeah, I can just sit on the couch and you know <laughs> defeat this giant bad guy that's destroying the world. Yeah, well, and a lot of guys, what they do is you're getting that quick affirmation. Mm. Where I think we're missing the point of sometimes when you do a hard thing, a hard project, or something that takes a lot of time and does all this. There is a reward you get from that there that is. I think is very different from, oh, a bunch of people liked my post. Mm -hmm. That's fine, but it's not the same. Yeah, it's almost, it's deeper. It is. It's a deeper sense of satisfaction mm -hmm. rather than a quick hit yeah. of, oh, that was cool. Yeah. Um, and I think some men are, are finding that and they're trying to get back into it to where, you know, there's a lot of men out there trying to, okay, I want to start doing more things with my hands, mm -hmm. trying to avoid phone stuff. Or mm -hmm. there's even phones out there now guys are getting that don't have apps and all that just so they don't get distracted. I'm not saying you have to go that far, but you have to be careful of, okay, am I using this stuff to avoid relationships, to right. avoid my own growth, to avoid doing some of the hard things I need to do? Yeah. It makes me think the next one we want to discuss is workaholism. Yeah. That's a huge one. And, and the thing is, like, work isn't bad. No. You no, know, even virtual all. stuff. Virtual yeah. stuff is not bad when it, in and of itself, or mm -hmm. at least a lot of it's not. Some of it, yeah. some of it is. Yeah, some of it is. <laughs> but a lot of it's not. Yeah. Like, it's it's okay to go to the movies. Mm -hmm. It's okay to, you know, play a video game and hang out with your kids while you play it or something like yeah. that. Um, or to just sit back and enjoy those things. Yeah. But it can quickly go from, hey, I'm doing this every once in a while for fun yeah. to... This is where, like, I have that sense of wellness because my mm -hmm. own life doesn't have that. Well, and with workaholism, what a lot of guys do is a lot of things in life don't give you that feedback right away. True. Like a relationship with your children, even with your wife, those things take time, take cultivation. Mm -hmm. And you're looking years down the road, especially your children, you're looking years down the road. Mm -hmm. So... That's not that instant feedback that I think a lot of men want. So work, we either get paid, we get bonuses, we get attaboys, we win awards, whatever. Mm -hmm. And those are fine. Mm -hmm. But if that's all you live for, mm -hmm. you're missing that other element of your life. This is so important. Yeah. Yeah. It's one that's more vague, but more rewarding. Even. Yeah, it is. And not running away from that mm -hmm. is going to be so helpful for people. Yeah. I think another one would be hobbies. Yeah. Um, 
you know, that guy who I think I've mentioned it before, but a guy who's like really good at building toy boats. Yeah. But his kids don't even know who he is Mm -hmm. because he's just so into the toy boats, man. Like that's his world or somebody who's super into golf. Yeah. You know, like they're never going to go pro. Yeah. Yeah. But man, with the amount of time, effort and money they dedicate to golf, you would think that they're pro. Yeah. There are, I think a lot of times we can tend to get you know, one track mind focused on things like that. Yeah. And it's like anything, it's, it's a way to do something. It's not a bad thing. Hobbies are good Mm -hmm. for men. I think it's good for every man to have a hobby. Yeah. But when that consumes everything, like I saw a video the other day, a guy said that the average golfer doesn't break a hundred. He said, they just don't have the time. They don't have all the stuff to what it takes to be a great golfer. He said, so people think, Mm -hmm. oh, I'm a terrible golfer. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, you're normal. Most golfers don't break 100. He said the average golfer doesn't. The ones who do are the ones who put more time in. They put more energy in. And he says that's what it takes to be a much better golfer. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of that just be who you are. Don't try to be something you can't unless you eventually you have the time. Mm -hmm. Maybe you play with your children or something like that. Or you and your wife play golf. Those are fun things to do together. But if your hobby, whatever it is, you know, model planes or whatever, you don't want that to consume so much of you that you leave out the other. Right, right. It's it's a lot of it's about prioritization. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. I think another thing guys will use to escape will be relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, some guys, that's the one night stand culture, yeah. you know, just finding a girl. But some guys, it's not necessarily that. It's looking for the right one. Yeah. You know, that, that guy who's always got a new girlfriend and, and he always thinks she's, she's the answer yeah. to my problems, man. Yeah. What's really happening is he's using her mm-hmm. to escape. Now he wouldn't yeah. say that. He probably doesn't even think that. Yeah. But he notices, I don't feel as bad about myself when she's around. Yeah. Yeah. A, so, a lot of guys do that with the relationships where it almost becomes their next video game. Can I find the right one? Mm. Maybe find one who's like this, find one who's like this. And so you're exactly right. What we're doing is we're basically using them for our needs. So we're not really as concerned about their needs. We're worried about what can they do for me, Yeah, which kind of is not the proper way to look at a relationship. Yeah, yeah. I think another one that we would all agree is unhealthy is addiction. Yeah. Um, I mean... A lot of people, the reason addictions are there is for coping. Yeah. I think yeah. most addictions, I, I would say, at least started out as coping mechanisms. Yeah, they are. And they, they, they do something to you in your brain where they give you that sense of comfort or that dopamine hit, you know, whether it be cocaine, pornography, alcohol, all those things do something to you. And it's very easy, depending on your personality, the way you were raised, where that becomes very important to you. Mm -hmm. In fact, I just saw a video, Tom Holland, the actor, the other day talking about he gave up drinking. Mm -hmm. And it was a a powerful thing of him saying how he realized it was becoming too important to him Mm -hmm. and it was affecting him. And I think for men, we have to be careful. Most addictions, well, pretty much all addictions aren't good. Even if it's something, you know, like a food addiction, you know, if you get to 600 pounds, that's not good. Mm-hmm. It's maybe more acceptable than a drug addiction. And maybe you don't die as quick as a drug addiction, but it will hurt you. Yeah. And then we have so many men today who have porn addiction, mm-hmm. where it's literally changing the fabric of our society because it's, it's messing with the natural way men are designed to be. Yeah. Yeah. And so we've got all of these different ways men escape mm-hmm. that you would understand as escapism. I think probably the last one would be just that sense of acceptance and giving up, Yeah, which I would say is almost an escapism from responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of guys come in with that. Well, people just need to accept me the way I am. Yeah. And, And you see that in our society where it's all about acceptance. We have to accept everybody. We have to accept everything. But a lot of times we use that to justify, Mm -hmm. I really don't want to change, or I don't think I can. And that's where a lot of men are. It's not that they don't want to change. That's true. They're just tired of failing. Yeah. 
So they just, you know, this is just the way I am. Mm -hmm. This is how I'm going to be. Everybody just needs to accept me. So then it becomes not their problem, but everybody else's problem. Yeah. And a lot of men use that to justify how they behave, what they do. Um, you know, a guy, I was hurt by a woman once, mm -hmm. you know, my wife cheated on me, my girlfriend left me. So I'm going to hate all women. I'm going to just be in relationships for me. Mm. And everybody's just got to deal with that. Yeah. Well, you just, you're going to be lonely. You're going to be a lonely, selfish person. Yeah. So there are, there are so many ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's probably more that we've missed. And oh yeah. There's tons. Yeah. Feel free to let us know. <laughs> um, but at least one of those probably resonates with every man. I think so. And what underlies the idea of escapism is a truth. It's mm -hmm. the truth that life is hard. Yeah, yeah. Life is hard, but growth is harder. Because mm -hmm. what you're having to do is you're having to get out of survival mode to put in conscious effort into getting better. And that's yeah. why so many men avoid it. I mean, I think of the best illustration I've thought of to this point is surgery. Mm -hmm. You know, that person who complains about, let's say, their knee yeah. for years, and yeah. they've accepted it. Yeah, They're they like, have. Well, it hurts me, but I just don't want to have to get surgery. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a decade down the line, they get surgery, and they're like, why didn't I do this sooner? Yeah. You know? Well, it's like physical therapy. Yeah. Physical therapy most times hurts. It's painful. But if you don't do it, the long-term effect is very negative. Yeah. And, like, uh, a while back, Years ago, I went to a physical therapist. My back was really bothering me, and I didn't know what was going on. And so the physical therapist began to work with me and teach me how to use my stomach muscles properly. I had weak abs, and, and she taught me how to do all this stuff. I haven't had a back problem really since. Mm. And it was all because I did the work. I mean, she showed me, ex and they were goofy-feeling exercises, you know, and you're just like, is this really helping? But it did. And once I noticed that, I went on. And I think for us as men, we kind of have to get over that. I have to do everything perfectly, mm. which is why like children, babies learn so much because they're willing to try like walking. They keep falling until they eventually learn to walk. Yeah. And I think for us as men, when we fail, we think that's it. Mm. I've, I've blown it. Mm -hmm. And so we don't just get up and keep moving mm. where those are the ones who usually end up making it. It's not the one who gets everything perfect. It's the one who just doesn't quit. Yeah. I mean, that is an absolute truth. Mm -hmm. uh, growth and success, wellness, health, all of those yeah. things are process oriented, mm -hmm. not destination oriented. Yeah. We live in a culture that's all about the bottom line. Yeah. And that's not how most areas of life work. Yeah. It's just not. Well, you look at the guys online who are the influencers, like a Jeff Cavalier, who, you know, what, 5% body fat or whatever. We see that and we think, oh, I want that. But then you look at the process they have to do. Yeah. That's become what they enjoy. Yeah. So they eat a certain way all the time. They exercise a certain way all the time. What they've done is they've taken what, this is where I am, but I got here because I'm willing to do all of this. And a lot of us see what we want, but all that work is like, oh, I don't know if I can do all that. Yeah. Okay, well, then you need to figure out what process you can do to get to where you want to go. Everything's a process. Yeah, and, and there is the reality that it is hard. Life, mm -hmm. life is difficult. Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be the 47 things that need to get fixed. Yeah. Yeah. The that list keeps, never ends. No. And that's, it's funny, Emily and I, in our first year of marriage, that was our number one takeaway from our marriage is the yeah. checklist never ends. Mm -hmm. And so we had to learn like, hey, if we're going to chill at yeah. any point, we have to actively choose that. It's yeah. not that there's not just not going to be anything to do. Yeah. And that then that's when you relax. Yeah. And it doesn't work that way. And so it's kind of the same thing with growth. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be any point where there's just nothing on the checklist and you're like, well, I guess I could start growing. Yeah. I guess I could start getting better. Yeah. You know, it, it's, you have to choose it and you have to choose it over other things. Yeah. And it's also interesting that sometimes your growth, you feel like, well, I'm never going to arrive. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true because when you grow from one area to the next area, then guess what? You learn more about yourself, about the world. Mm -hmm. Then you see, oh, there's another area. Oh, there's another area. So you think, well, I want to grow from here to here. Well, once you get there, you realize 
oh, there's a whole lot more. Yeah. And that's the important thing for men. Your growth is a beginning place of getting to a destination. But a lot of times when you get to the destination you're shooting for, you realize there's a whole lot more to this. Yeah. It's almost growth can become a hobby. Yeah, it can. It can become something that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. But there is that initial point where it's just frustrating. Yeah. I mean, that's how it is physically for sure. When you first start exercising, you won't like it. It's just yeah. you're having to do a bunch of stuff. But eventually there's something that clicks in you and you go a little crazy and you're like, yeah. man, I haven't exercised in a while. I should yeah. get back in it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's where I'm at now, but it's years down the road. Well, and it's like it's like your sister, I just talked to her the other day and she's been going to the gym and working out and seeing some benefit and everything. And she's got a bunch of friends visiting her over in Korea. And she said she started thinking, how am I going to get to the gym? Mm -hmm. You know, so her mindset is already because she likes the process. She enjoys the working out. Her sleep is better. She feels yes. better. And she's seeing the benefit. So then she wants to keep growing in that. Yeah. And that's what we would encourage you as our listeners today is that growth doesn't have to be something that is just a means to an end. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be something you run from. Yeah, Growth can actually end up being something that almost becomes a relief and a release because eventually you're going to understand that you growing benefits everything else. Yeah. And we'll talk about that in future sessions a little bit more in depth. But mm -hmm. growth doesn't have to be something we run from. At first, if we push through that initial pushback season, yeah. it can begin to reward us. Yeah. Just like with anything that's worth doing. Well, and you look back on your life when you were in school, when you did things, you know, maybe you had that one class with the teacher that was so hard, but then you got the good grade. Mm -hmm. You felt good. You played a sport. You worked hard, you grew, you developed, you learned an instrument, whatever. Every every one of those is hard, but when you overcome, you feel good. And then you, oh, I can I can continue this in other areas. Yeah. And you know, today's the day that we can start that journey for yeah. a lot of guys. What yeah. would what would you say is kind of the challenge we want to give guys as a takeaway from this podcast? We've talked about escapism, yeah. we've talked yeah. about the nature of growth and what mm -hmm. all that means. So what can they do with that this week? I think for a lot of guys, one, it's looking at in their life, what are they doing to avoid? Mm. What are they using uh, in their procrastination? Mm. You know, I don't want to do this, so I do this. And I think for a lot of men, it's just kind of getting honest with that. Mm. Honest about what's uncomfortable for me. Mm-hmm that I'm not doing. And I'm not saying that you have to do everything. Like you said, the checklist never ends. No, no. It's just that perfect. what are some of the things that are important to you that you keep putting off? Mm. Maybe it's a mindset change. Maybe, you know, it is. Maybe it is a project around the house. That one project your wife just is on you about. If for some reason you just don't want to do it. Or maybe it's just spending time with the child who maybe you're having a hard time connecting with them and it's tough. Those are things sometimes we can just avoid. Yeah. And I think we need to recognize that. And instead of moving away from it, kind of lean into it Yeah. and say, oh, what can I do where I'm not avoiding this as much? Yeah. That reflection where you lean into it. I yeah. like that phrase. Yeah. I think, and I think for a lot of men, once they learn to do that in one area, then they begin to see it in other areas. Yeah. So what happens is you become a man who's much more in tune with yourself and the world around you. Yeah, I think that's right. And that journey can start today for any mm -hmm. of our people. Um, yeah. I mean, that's a journey we're currently undergoing. Oh yeah, and it's it's all the time. It I mean, is. I was just, I'm reading some books lately who they're opening my mind up about an area in my life that I didn't even realize I had had some certain negative thought patterns in. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I never knew this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm 56 and I'm still going, what an idiot, you yeah. know? And that's just normal, I think, for everybody. Yeah. It's not taking the journey too seriously to where mm -hmm. you have to do it perfectly. Yeah. But not running from it. Yeah. Because the truth is, escapism rewards you up front yeah. and then kicks you in the butt later. It does. And it that process is just going to keep going. And we don't want you to live in that. And we don't yeah. want to live in that. And so that's why we create things like this podcast. That's mm -hmm. why we have our resources at thrivingman.com yeah. is to help guys get out of that cycle of yeah. downward spiraling mm -hmm. to get into a cycle of upward spiraling. Yeah, because you can get into your own brain mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and really negative everything out. I'm, I'm a terrible man. I, I stink at life and blah, blah, blah. And what we need to do as men is start going, okay, what can I do to move up? What yeah. can I do to thrive? What's that, what's that one area of success I can find that will move into other areas of success in my life? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's true. But that's all the time we have for today. Yeah. Uh, we will continue this series next week. We're going to be getting to the more exciting and good parts of getting to a solution. Yeah. Of getting that's good. better. You know, mm-hmm. we've talked about the problems. Let's talk yeah. about the wins. Now. We'll talk about the wins. And so we're going to be getting into that. But we hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining us on the Thriving Man Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Thriving Man Podcast. If you want to check out more resources from David and Reese, you can go to thrivingman.com. We'll see you in the next episode.